Let us pray. Gracious Lord, if not you were us, and on who else? You alone are the solid rock, the rock on which we stand. All other else is sinking sand. As we search upon your word, may you truly affirm us upon that rock, that we will stand on the rock, your rock, for our eternal peace. Bless us now as we turn to your word that we will be edified, justified, sanctified continuously until his return. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite our readers. Um, Laurentine will be reading the Psalms and the Old Testament and Marie Chantal will be reading the New Testament for us. Psalm 31, verses 1 to 8. To the chief of music, a psalm of David. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated those who regard useless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversities and have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a wide place. Amen. Today, if you hear God's voice, how do you not your heart? Our Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of Kings. 1 Kings chapter 19, 4 to 8. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the word of the Lord. John 66, 35, 41 to 51. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The Jews then complained about him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered 
and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Jean 6, 35, 41 à 51. Jésus leur dit, « Je suis le pain de vie. Celui qui vient à moi n'aura jamais faim, et celui qui croit en moi n'aura jamais soif. » Les Juifs murmuraient à son sujet, parce qu'il avait dit, « Je suis le pain qui est descendu du ciel. » Et il disait, « N'est-ce pas là Jésus, le fils de Joseph, « Celui dont nous connaissons le père et la mère, comment donc, dit-il, je suis descendu du ciel? » Jésus leur répondit, « Ne murmurez pas entre vous. Nul ne peut venir à moi si le père qui m'a envoyé ne l'attire, et je le ressusciterai au dernier jour. » Il est écrit dans les prophètes, « Ils seront tous enseignés de Dieu. » Ainsi, quiconque a entendu la par le père, et a reçu son enseignement, vient à moi. C'est que nul n'a vu le Père, sinon celui qui vient de Dieu. Celui-là a vu le Père. En vérité, en vérité, je vous le dis, celui qui croit en moi en la vie éternelle. Je suis le pain de vie. Vos pères ont mangé la manne dans le désert et ils sont morts. C'est ici le pain qui descend du ciel afin que celui qui en mange ne meure point. Je suis le pain vivant qui est descendu du ciel. Si quelqu'un mange de ce pain, il vivra éternellement, et le pain que je donnerai, c'est ma chair, que je donnerai pour la vie du monde. Amen. We're going to sing our next hymn.
please stay standing for a minute. Gracious Lord, Father, we just thank you. Come and take absolute and total control in a time of service that we may hear you. Come, Father, that you may touch someone, if not all of us, just now, as we come into your holy presence. In your mighty and wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I did not intend to undress in front of you, but it's getting hot up here as well. And the sweat is pouring bucket. So forgive me for... Better now? Good. Okay. Hey, good morning again. And please be very welcome. If you're here for your first time, truly be at home. We have slight changes in how our service will finish today. Usually we go downstairs for a continuous fellowship, but we will not be because of flood that affected us downstairs uh, over the course of the weekend. So come again so that you can enjoy the second phase of our fellowship. This probably be in the next week or two. To God be all the glory. As we turn to our Father, I really take total delight to talk about this flood and the absence of the fellowship downstairs because I love free bread. Each time when I go there, I chase where the flower goes and I try to follow the track of the flower. I'm a flower man. I eat flour all the time. So I love bread. When I hear bread, it, it shakens my whole body and it brings me alive. However, I don't know about you, when we were kiddies, our primary school was very close to the military camp, the army camp in the village where I was born and brought up. And so when we go to school, we make friends with the armies. They used to eat big long bread and sardine every morning. So you wait to see your friend so that your friend in the army can connect with you. Then they will bring their bread and give it to you. And then you got a breakfast. Plenty of us did not have a civilized breakfast going to school. So we depended on these military friends. Free bread was so powerful, but there comes a time we also have to pay a price for taking the free breads from them because they have some difficult assignments you have to do from time to time to stay in that friendship. So it wasn't totally as free as the bread we're going to hear today, but it was sufficient to keep us going. And, and, and time to time you were able to pay and time to time you were not able to pay and you could uh, lose a friend for not uh, paying the balance of the bread you're taking. However, that was the amazing bread we had. And this morning as we turn to the Lord, as we enter into a place of uh, worship, seeking the face of our Father, we have a video, but I'm going to put that video. Are we ready now? Yeah, we're going to watch this video for about, we're hoping, and then we take off. Thank you. The mini MBA marketing was everything I expected. It gives you the tools and frameworks to make you more confident in your role. It made me feel like a better, more rounded marketer. Mini MBA, major ROI. What did Jesus mean when he said, I am the bread of life? I am the bread of life, John 6.35, 6 is one of the seven I am statements of Jesus. Jesus used the same phrase, I am, in seven declarations about himself. In all seven, he combines I am with tremendous metaphors which express his saving relationship toward, toward the world. All appear in the book of John. John 6.35 says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Bread is considered a staple food, i.e. a basic dietary item. A person can survive a long time on only bread and water. Bread is such a basic food item that it becomes synonymous for food in general. We even use the phrase breaking bread together to indicate the sharing of a meal with someone. Bread also plays an integral part of the Jewish Passover meal. The Jews were to eat unleavened bread during the Passover feast and then for seven days following as a celebration of the exodus from Egypt. Finally, when the Jews were wandering in the desert for 40 years, God rained down bread from heaven to sustain the nation. All of this plays into the scene being described in John 6 when Jesus used the term bread of life. He was trying to get away from the crowds to no avail. He had crossed the Sea of Galilee, and the crowd followed him. After some time, 
Jesus inquires of Philip how they're going to feed the crowd. Philip's answer displays his little faith when he says they don't have enough money to give each of them the smallest morsel of food. Finally, Andrew brings to Jesus a boy who had five small loaves of bread and two fish. With that amount, Jesus miraculously feeds the throng with lots of food to spare. Afterwards, Jesus and his disciples cross back to the other side of Galilee. When the crowd sees that Jesus has left, they follow him again. Jesus takes this moment to teach them a lesson. He accuses the crowd of ignoring his miraculous signs and only following him for the free meal. Jesus tells them in John 6:27, Do not labor for food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. In other words, they were so enthralled with the food that they were missing out on the fact that their Messiah had come down. So, the Jews asked Jesus for a sign that he was sent from God, as if the miraculous feeding and walking across water weren't enough. They tell Jesus that God gave them manna during the desert wandering. Jesus responds by telling them that they need to ask for a true bread from heaven that gives life. When they ask Jesus for this bread, Jesus startles them by saying, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is a fun... Thank you so much, and brother, and God bless you. Um, the video says a little boy, but the Bible does not tell whether it was an old man selling the bread or a little boy selling the bread. But we're going to take total delight from the actors and actresses who put this video together for us to flash through this morning and to tell our children that there is room for you too in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus loves you immensely. And Jesus never ended his ministry only with adults. Many a times we see him showing and displaying his love to children. And his metaphor for, metaphor for children was so amazing and powerful that he made us realize we cannot come or enter unless we come in that mindset of children. It's a whole sermon for itself, so I will not dive into it, else it will be a total distraction. However, cet matin, je voulais dire, s'il y a un petit enfant parmi nous, que Jésus-Christ a souvent à voir des avenues pour les enfants. Il a beaucoup parlé de les enfants, utiliser les enfants quand il fait les études pour, avec ses disciples. En ce cas, il dit toujours, sauf que nous, on venons dans euh, le cœur de les enfants, on ne peut pas entrer. It's an invitation that we come in the mindset of children to enter in his presence. In John chapter 6, Jesus engages with a crowd that has just witnessed his miraculous feeding of 5,000 men. Some Bible version says plus women and children. 5,000, however, is the standing out figure that we can hold on to very strong. They seek him out, hoping for more of the same physical sustain sustenance. And they challenge him to be their breadwinner forever. Liking him to Moses, they could remember vividly what their parents have told them about what happened to them in the wilderness. So as far as they were concerned, this bread has come again. At the same time, the entire Israel and the nations around all knew that there will be a Messiah to come. And they were waiting for this Messiah. Only for he was not yet qualified to be that Messiah. And he journeyed his time with them. Jesus provoked them to challenge him, and he handled them just in the right way. However, Jesus was the opportunity to redefine, this is the opportunity to redefine true sustenance, contrasting his offering with the temporal bread given to them in the desert by Moses, eaten by the ancestors. Jesus began by profoundly declaring that he is that bread of life. This new bread, he explained, is not like the manna that sustains the Israelites in the desert, which was temporal and physical. Instead, he is offering a true bread, a bread from heaven, a bread that leads to eternal life. The multitude paid close attention. It was amazing to them to hear him, and yet at the same time baffling of the truth that he was speaking. 
Previously in chapter 5, our Lord was rejected by the Jewish uh, religious leaders because he has healed a man on Sabbath and especially for claiming also equality with Jesus and with God. Now these Jerusalem Jewish leaders are more committed. They were more and more committed to put him to death. He was no longer interesting them. Rather, their mission was to find every excuse they could levy on him and put him to death. This morning, as we turn to enter into our passage, let us remember that even up to this day, we are still eagerly looking to crucify him, though he has been crucified already. He has gone to the grave. He has conquered. He has arose from the dead. He has ascended in heaven. We're still looking to rip everything of him apart. His word, if we could throw it to the furthest sea and river, we will do it. That's what we are still looking for. For you and I, seated here this morning, we are blessed. And we are mightily touched because his amazing grace has fallen upon us. And he has opened our eyes that we can see. He has circumcised the work, he has the, 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 our ears and cleaned the wax of our ears that we may hear. And to this point then, let our mouth testify to his truth. Let us speak of his truth. The Galileans who were once following him as his disciples now rejected him out black. The reason will be our Lord's teachings on the bread of life in chapter 6. At this point, Jesus is not nearly as popular as he was in the beginning. Two things we're going to look at this morning. Help me. Thank you. Next one. Bless you. Jesus defines the bread in verse 35. He defines the bread of life to the people, to his listeners. And he says this. Jésus le dit. Je suis le pain de vie. Celui qui vient à moi ne aurait jamais faim. Et celui qui vient, qui croit à moi, ne aurait jamais soif. He says, I am the bread of life. In 35. And the people were like, wow. What a claim. And this morning as we turn to the word, may we be like, wow. What a joy and a relief. Because we know that he is the bread of life. And if we are here struggling with the truth, of the Bible this morning, may the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon each one of us that we may come into that inner truth because that's where the fight is, what is true and what isn't true. The bread which God gave, past tense, to the Israelites in the past was not the true bread. But the bread God is now giving to men, present tense, as the Bible writes it, is from heaven. The Father who gave the bread to their forefathers in the wilderness is still given bread, but only a different kind of bread, a permanent bread, a bread that brings eternal life and a true bread. The only bread we can eat this morning and truly be satisfied is the invitation. Jesus is not just a bread giver, but he is the bread. He pronounced himself to the people. The bread is from heaven. The bread is a person. Jesus is the bread. Our Lord's audience does not understand what he was saying at all. They still think Jesus is offering them some kind of a literal bread, a physical bread, to which they will eat like their fathers ate in the past. They quickly ask for more bread. They said, sir, give us this bread. Give us this bread that we may eat. They offered Jesus a full-time job as a chef to manufacture bread, to go into a bakery and start producing the bread for them. That was their expectation. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which, was, which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. John 6, 58. But listen, long before Jesus came, the Old Testament have spoken of his coming. They've spoken of this bread coming to mankind. They've spoken of the Savior coming. And he says this, I say, everyone who test, come to me, eat and drink, without money, come. He says, it's free. 
is freely given. Come and eat. Come and drink. Isaiah 55 verse 1. It says, come to me. It's free. It says, come in, eat and drink. It's not like you go down uh, St. Uber in the shopping market there looking for designer bags and designer clothes and designer shoes that will not be given to you for free. It's not like you go to the most expensive restaurant looking for a good meal that the plate will not be handed to you for free. Yeah, it's for free. It says, come. Come to me and eat and live. Come, he calls us, to eat and live. In Psalms 34 and verse 8, it says, Rejoice, for life is given to those who follow him. This invitation is for you, is for me, and is for us. Second one, they grumbled from verse 41 to 55. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph and Mary? His parents we know so well. Whose father and mother we know. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? This was an insult, total insult to their well-being. Today in this current society and time, which is so far different, I agree with any historian and I agree with any scientist and I agree with any educative person amongst us who say the time has changed. Truly, the time has changed. They live in a time without the Holy Spirit. We're living in a time with the Holy Spirit. They could have been lost. They could have been suffering and struggling in the wilderness. But we live in a time of self-thought. A time when you put your own knees and you could hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you directly. A time when God no longer needs prophets to reach us. A time when God no longer needs pastors to reach us. A time when God no longer needs uh, uh, bishops to reach us, moderators to reach us. A time when God could come to any one of us if we seek him truly in kind in our hearts. He will hear you kneeling in front of your bed and praying and he will answer you. They knew him. They got so angry. In March 13, 55, they listed his whole family genealogy everywhere. Brothers, friends, everybody they could think of. He was a Galilean. Nothing good can come from Galilee as far as they know. By this, there are many with different opinions about Jesus. The Jewish religious reader, uh, leaders no longer want to regard him as any piece of a prophet, all or new. All they wanted was to kill him. Many who listened to him walk away from him. And some were confused and lost. But also many in the crowd have seen clearly through the influence of God and his spirit that this is the son of God. He is the Messiah we were waiting for. He is the prophet promised in the Old Testament. Many could see. And so they stand with confidence, waiting for Jesus to lead them from one step to another. My dying desire this morning is that we too will see him. Through the power of the Holy Spirit this time. A powerful gift of life. The Holy Spirit eye opening. He is right in us. And acting in us. And pointing us to the direction. To some their king. He was their king. And even so they forced him. To get into a factory and start baking bread. John chapter 6 verse 15. And they were all in disarray. However, some sincerely believe in him as a Messiah. You see that even including the 11 of his disciples. The 11 of his disciples believe in him as his Messiah. And many others who followed. John 1, 12. John 4. Uh, 1249 and 211 and 23. I know somebody is probably scratching their head and saying, Wilson, what do you mean by 11 disciples? There were 12. There was one who betrayed him, so I did not count him. But he was there at the last. There were 12 disciples with him. Even the one who betrayed him, I also strongly believe he knew he was betraying God. He knew he was betraying a Savior. He knew he was betraying, he was betraying a Messiah. But he was from his father, the devil. So he had a mission to accomplish. And Jesus says, did I not choose you? 
and even the one who will betray me. So Jesus knew he was not there by accident. He was there for a mission. He was there to fulfill. He was there to fulfill that we may enter our joy of today. Some of the people seem to embrace this view of their religious leader, rejecting Jesus as an imposter. At least, not their Messiah, not the one they were waiting for. Starting at verse 41, it is this letter group that react to Jesus' teachings on the breath of life and began to grumble. They became so grumpy, right? And they were whispering to one another. So if you whisper, I, I could see your eyes and your lips. But Jesus did not need to see the eyes and the lips. Jesus could hear them. If I see you leaning your head, I know you want to say something about Wilson. But, but Jesus did not need to see them lean their heads. He did not need to hear them murmur because he could even hear them in their own heart panting. They are saying, in fact, we know who Jesus is, where he came from. We know about his birth as a mere man. How can he now, at this point in time in his life, claim to be divine? The discernment was not upon them to know of Jesus' birth. It isn't really such a hard question, isn't it? Mary and Joseph were the earthly parents of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mary was his biological mother, while Joseph wasn't. But it's because the Holy Spirit and Scripture is teaching us that now, to the eyes of those back in the old, they did not know the inside and the back room, as they call it, of what was happening. But that was what they saw. The Old Testament Scripture taught us that the, the promised Messiah was to be both human and divine. God and man. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the list goes on and on and on. And he was to be born of a virgin. Isaiah 7, 14 called him Emmanuel. They were spiritually blind. So they murmured. Our Lord responded to the complaint, but not in a way his adversary expected, and certainly not in a way the witch. Jesus tells them to stop mumbling to one another. Do they not believe him? This is no blow to his pride, nor his shock as our Lord and Savior. Jesus expected this. They do not believe him. So he expected that, and he knows they will not believe him. Jesus pulls them up, and he spoke clearly to them. He says, you do not believe, and you cannot believe. But let me say this at this point. We've come to a time when we say all is good, when all is not good. We've come to a time we say all is well, when we know all is not well. We've come to a time and a place where we know the truth. It's not like we don't know it. We know the truth. We can hear it. The truth will not be taught in this church this morning. Neither was it taught in this church last week or the week after last. The truth is given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. The truth is in you. And this is what Jesus was saying to the crowd. He says the truth is with you from my Father, not from me. I haven't got the truth to give you here and now. You got the truth, and if you don't have it, then you are not from my Father. When I was going through my script, I asked him in my prayer, I said, Father, this is tough and hard. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to take it in. It's hard for me to understand it. It's hard for me to digest it. How do I bring it forth? How do I tell people you are the bread of life? How do I tell people tu es la pain de ville? La pain qui donnera la vie à monde entier. Comment je vais l'expliquer? Comment je vais le dire? Pour que les gens peuvent plus comprendre. Parce qu'on est dans cette génération que on dit tout est vrai, tout est correct. Everything we see and touch, we always say it is well, leave them alone. 
It is where I leave them alone. This morning, I come in the finest of my passion and joy to tell you Jesus is the bread of life, the bread that gives life. And when we enter into his presence, we become new. That's why the Bible says, he who is in Christ is a new creation. You eat this bread, you become new. This morning, we are a gathering of God's people. This morning, as we are seated here in St. Edward, we are a gathering of God's people. Why am I saying we are a gathering of God's people? Because we could claim all the different backgrounds we're coming from. Some will say, I'm from the Baptist church. I'm from the Roman Catholic church. I'm from no church. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you come from. What matters is this morning that we are gathered here in his name. If yet in you, he is not really your bread of life. I invite you this morning to ask him, gracious God, speak to me in the power of your Holy Spirit that you become my bread of life. Without which we are at nothing. If you are here with a very big face cap, though you're not wearing it physically and saying I'm a Presbyterian, I want to really say I feel sorry. Because we the Presbyterian are hiding the truth. We are stepping on the truth. We are no longer speaking the truth. We are no longer preaching his truth. We are throwing his truth away and accepting every kind of doctrine and religion. We sit under any kind of preaching and we just go home, amen. And sometimes we even subject the preacher. You only speak for 12 minutes. Any more than 18 minutes, you're not coming back here. But I've seen people, when we go downstairs to fellowship, they ask for a second portion because they enjoy the meal. Don't we? Don't we ask for a second portion? Don't we ask for a third portion? Why can't someone say, Pastor, stay up there and preach another longer? Because I can speak for three hours. I long that Sunday morning. Someone will say, hey, hey, no amen now. Keep going. The Spirit of God is present and He is ready to turn us in any direction we want to. They grumbled because the truth was not with them. They murmured because they were not taught. And this morning the Bible says clearly, Jesus declared to them, unless you are taught by my Father, you cannot come. Another kind of worm I don't want to open. It's a very deep kind of worm. But this was his word to our passage this morning. He says, you will be taught by the Holy Spirit to come into that presence, to enter into that place. And it's my joy. It took me 40 years to surrender. It would take some people 70 years to surrender. But at the age of 13, I knew Jesus was the Son of God. At the age of 13, I knew he died on the cross. At the age of 13, I knew he has given me a new life. But I told him I wasn't ready. Paul, when called Saul, was not ignorant. He did not say, send me to Damascus. He said, give me a warrant. I will go to Damascus, and I will find them Jesus' devotee. He says, I will go there, and I will find them. He knew whom he was going to look for. And on the way to Damascus, he encountered the truth. It wasn't new to him. It was a truth already in him. Suppress by his behavior. So whatever our behaviors are, we were not born with it. Whatever our cravings are, we were not born with them. We were born unique and defined for our Father in heaven. And when we enter this world, he allows us to flow as free human beings. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, because we wanted ugly things, darkness, sinful things, he led us into it. But to those who have journeyed into darkness and took a pause and called his name, he has reached out back to them again. And to them he has given new life. He who is in Christ is a new creation. Jesus Christ, the very true bread, whoever believes in him has eternal life, John 3.16 but not only eternal life, he says, such will not perish, but enter into the glory of God. 
These grumblers against our Lord do not receive his teachings, thus show that they have no part of this kingdom. John 1, 18, 3, 32, 33, 5, 20, 21, 37, 38, he alone has seen the Father. He says, not that you have seen the Father to be taught by the Father. No. But he says, he who comes from the Father has seen the Father, and now he's speaking the truth of the Father to us. This morning, let us rejoice that it will not only be the bread and sardine handed to me as a school primary school boy by the army, but it will be the real bread. The bread that when I eat, I will no longer eat, need any more bread to eat. And this bread he has given us that we may have life eternal. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, God Almighty, for you have considered my troubles. You have known my soul in adversity. The Father has located us. He knows what you're going through. He knows what I am going through. He knows our moment of joy. He knows our time of adversary. So we can trust in him wholeheartedly and know that he is with us. Feet on my flesh, Jesus called them, 48 to 51. Now Jesus gets to the real hard part of his teachings. The nature of this spiritual bread. The gospel of John is uniquely structured around the seven I am saying. We are to know Jesus Christ in the spirit and in truth by walking in faith, meaning knowing Jesus and experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Feed on me the bread of life. Do this practically through regular celebration of communions and reading the word of God. I invite our leaders elders, and working members of this congregation that we should strive. I hate to put minimum, but we have 52 weeks and do more communions than we've been doing. On that night on which he was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it. He says to the multitude, not the usual that you already know, take and eat. But he says, as often as you do this, as often as you do this. Meaning we should do it time without number. It's for the remission of our sins. It's time without numbers. He says as often. So do it more and more and more. The church of God will not die. But the church of men will die. Our father is not absent and he's not ignorant of what we are going through. But he is aware, and the time is his, not ours. Jesus says, the time is for my father, not for you, Thomas, not for you, John, not for you, Peter. The time is of my father. For you do not know the time, but all he has called us to do is to be on a light, to be ready at all time. Like the hymn we sang, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Lift up his royal banner, it must not suffer lost. It is suffering lost. It is on the ground, and he's looking for able men to pick it up. Listen carefully. It's not my words. It is the word of God. He's looking for able men to pick up his banner and lift up his banner and stand to his truth. I have said this before. I will say it again today. Every one of his disciples, long before his disciples, every one of the prophets of God were killed. Elijah even took to run when Jezebel came after him. And find a place to hide. It was horrible. They were killed. They were mistreated. Until this day, you speak the truth, you will be in trouble. You keep your mouth shut, you will be good. You drive your good car, you go to a good home, you eat a good food, you sleep on a good bed. The truth is hard. The truth is heavy. Multitude have seen 5,000 men fed from nothing. Multitude turned your back when he came into the truth. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the flesh you need to eat. In my prayer, I ask God, open this passage even deeper for me to see. To see whether Jesus had a sharp knife ready to cut his body and actually give them his flesh to eat. But no. Yet again, another deeper sense of metaphor. He calls them. To eat. So he took a bread and he told them, This bread is my 
flesh. He says, this bread is my flesh. We are not ready to go the hard road. So we query those who are on the hard road. We ask them, is that where God truly wants you to be? Yes, he wants us to be on the hard road. The hard road is to uphold his truth and empty out ourselves with nothing left in it. Anything you protect, you preserve, you will lose it. The Bible says so. And anything you lost, you will gain it. If it is in Christ's name, if you're losing it in Christ's name, if you go and gamble with your money and lost your money in gambling, you're not going to gain it. But if you put your money in God's work, you will gain it. I'm not preaching prosperity gospel here. But I'm saying, if you ask how can we help this community in this church, your energy will be repaid. Your energy will be replenished. Whatever way that energy is. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. The only bread men can eat to live. It's my truth. It's my word. We cannot add to it. We cannot subtract from it. If you don't believe it, just don't come back next Sunday. Please don't go and say, Wilson asked me not to come back. Because I want you to believe it. But if you don't believe it, don't come back. His word is written in black and white. He says in Romans 8, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And he says to us in every truth, If you do not recognize this truth that you are a sinner, He says, then my truth is not in you. For we need Jesus. That's why he came and died on the cross because we are broken people. He came and died on the cross because we are sick people. He came and died on the cross that we may become well and strong and healthy. His truth is all that matters. His truth is ugly. His truth is me looking at my daughter Samara and telling Samara, you change your style of dressing and you trust Jesus and you fear Jesus in everything you do. For his blessing is upon you. And you will not miss your track as you go on in life. But if you do not change your style, Samira, you will miss your track. You will see beautiful things, but they are not beautiful. You will see attractive things, but they are not attractive. Because their end point is death. The word of God says so. Not me. And I can only say that to you so that others could hear with the deepest of love in my heart. Ready for rejection, ready to be thrown away. But this is the truth Jesus calls us to. He says, We are broken people. Today, if you put anyone out there and say, Stone them, I bet you the community will stone them. But on that day, Jesus says, If you know you are without sin, stone. I mean, not even his disciples. They could have said, We are without sin because we are with our master. They could have thrown those stones. But they didn't. Not one. Everybody was gone. Only Jesus and the woman. And Jesus says, woman, go and sin no more. Listen, it's always go and do it no more. If we go from here and we still do all the stupid things we've been doing, and then we come back the next Sunday and say, I'm a Christian, I'll tell you, sister, you're on a rough patch. You really truly want to sit up because it is with love. I don't have the power to condemn. I don't have the power to pull judgment. But I got the audacity to speak the truth. Because that's what he said to Joshua. Be of sound courage. And be ready. Because Joshua was going to face tough time. And this morning, I said to each one of us as we are gathered, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. In 35, in 48, and in 51. Jesus went a step beyond the essential recognition. And he says this. He says the bread of life is his flesh and his blood that we are to eat and drink and to live. He says we are to eat and drink and to live. 
Romans 8, not Romans 8, Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. The Bible says now they have deranged from the course of nature that God created. They've turned from man to man. Somebody will say, hey, Wilson, get off that subject. That's my subject. They've turned from man to man, woman to woman. We say it's okay. I'm afraid. I got three beautiful, bouncing girls. Margaret is 20. Isabel is 12. Emanuela is 9. What becomes if they tell me otherwise in the morning? My heart will bleed, but I need to know the truth. They were created in the image of God. In the image of God, he created them male and female. And in Genesis 3, says, the man will leave his father and mother, not the woman. If you're going to find that man, I want to tell you this morning, you're a fool. Wait for the man to come and look for you. He says, the man will leave his father and mother and will find you. To all the women in this congregation, you are diamonds. To all the women in this congregation, you are gold. To all the women in this congregation, gold and diamond is buried in the ground. Men have to go into the water. They have to dig hard. They have to sweat to get it. Don't go towards them. Let them come. Pray and God will send them. Else God will let you loose. Else he will let you loose. Read it, Romans 1, 18 to 32. My daughters, you are. Trust in him. He is the bread that gives life. Stand on the truth. Rest within the truth. He loves you. He loves me. You want to hear a horrible past? Come to me and listen to my story. My horrible past. My joy is... The first edition I wrote it about myself. The second edition, the people who think they know me, they're writing. And they stop writing because they don't have any more material. I have changed the course. The Lord God put his hand on me and he changed the traffic. And now he is writing a story. You want to buy a book? Say, I'm looking for Wilson E. Young, third edition. God's version for him. You enter into true repentance. The Lord comes in you and the Lord changes you. And don't let anyone reduce you of your yesterday. Stand strong today and say, I am new. The Father has forgiven me. He has given me new life. And upon that new life, I will stand and rest. Eat on his flesh by reading his word by day and night. Drink of his blood by verifying everything to be true from his word. Jesus loves you. He loves me. He loves us this morning. In his mighty name we pray. Amen. We didn't go to my last slide because I flew through it. You can leave it there and they will read it later at the end of the service. But God is good. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we praise you. Father, we bow before you this morning. Father, we worship your holy name. Because you are good and wonderful and excellent. Your history... Not the world's history. Your history have shown us records and counts of numerous wonderful, amazing incidents and punishment you've done to the people of the past, our parents in the past, and we are no different from them. Lord, we take total delight when we read fearfully the story of Ananias and Sapphira. When we read joyfully with confusion and perplex the story of King David with Bathsheba. Your ways are truly not our ways. And yet we wrestle this very day and age with academics, with money, with everything of foolishness and darkness. We don't even seek you. We just read you from academic point. Father, forgive us in heaven. Forgive us, O oh gracious God. Forgive us in our lack of eating the real bread, the bread that gives life. Forgive us, O oh gracious God, from not turning to drink, not to be tested anymore. Your word says we should be silent and listen more. Father, we want to speak more than we can listen. Help us, O oh gracious God, that we take a pause and truly turn slowly 
and drive on the slow lane rather than on the fast lane all the time so that you may meet with us. Gracious Lord, we cannot do it unless you. Your son says if you do not teach, we cannot come. May your Holy Spirit truly bring your truth in us. As we are gathered here, many of us who have suffered flood this weekend, I pray for all such home who are still struggling to zap out the air and find solution and disinfectants, Father, that you will just grant wisdom and resources to help rebuild and refix all damages. Father, we also thank you that when we suffer flood in the basement of this church, it wasn't as worse as we would have thought. And for your love to know we will be meeting this Sunday morning for your glory, that the upper part was spared. Father, we praise you. Gracious Lord, as we are gathered here from all different backgrounds, may you all tune us into one little point, a point of agreement, a point of alignment, that truly Jesus Christ is your son. That truly Jesus Christ, your son, is the living bread. And that truly, that bread is all we need. Parentenel, aidez-nous de bouffer des sept pains. On veut des sept pains, on veut des sept sangs pour boire. Pour qu'on peut plus, on ne peut plus être faim et soif. Et de cette cas, on soulève tous les enfants parmi nous. Que vous pouvez plus les bénir. Guidez nos enfants. Guidez nos enfants de votre vérité. Guidez nos enfants pour qu'ils puissent plus comprendre de vous en direct. Guidez nos enfants pour que l'école ne vont pas les apprendre autrement. Guidez nos enfants pour que le président de notre pays ne vont pas les dire autrement aux télévisions. Guidez nos enfants pour que la monde entière ne va pas les bouffer. Guidez nos enfants en prie au nom de ton fils. Et maintenant, on te remercie pour tous les biens que tu nous as accordés pour envoyer ton fils dans ce monde pour qu'il puisse plus venir nous chercher. Aidez-nous de porter vos paroles de toute la vérité pour que ça puisse plus gagner une autre personne parmi nous. Sauf Jésus-Christ qui a demandé qu'il puisse encore pécher une fois plus pour qu'il puisse plus arrêter les poissons. Sinon, il ne pouvait pas le faire. Aidez-nous pour que si on sort dehors, on puisse attirer les gens par ta vérité. In this point in time, we lift up all those who are sick. Father, some of us are seated here but suffering with arthritis and other kinds of pain. Some of us are awaiting medical appointment. May we know your internal peace and glory. May we know your hand upon us. May we find comfort in pain and to know that you are present with us. Yes, Lord, we are everything in every name we have mentioned from every denomination that we could count. But yet we are your children. Stand unique in your son that nothing will reduce us or redefine us other than his name, and that in his name we come to this truth. As we go from here, may we know your internal peace and comfort. May we bring love to the people we meet outside. And yet, Lord, we have a long list of things to present before you. Many are looking for jobs amongst us. Many are looking for pardons and forgiveness amongst us. Many are looking for a home. Many are truly crying and asking you, Lord, hold my hand that I may stand again. Father, to all such cry and plead, may your ears be hearkened. And now we surrender all our requests to your command. And before we summarize in the prayer, your son taught us, I remember my friend Bless, who have taken the flight to Togo to meet a friend in an accident. Father, that... Uh, you help that situation and whatever could be done, be done, that he will be rescued and be given another opportunity. As we are gathered here, Father, to us who are weaker in mind, we seek you that your hand be upon us and that we could become strong and convicted deeply in our hearts and to sing praises to your holy name. And now, as we turn to the prayer, your son taught us to pray. May you hear us in heaven. Our Father, who act in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass. And lead us not into temptation. 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brother Paul, would you dedicate our offering for us, please? Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you're here for the first time and you're still holding your offering, it is blessed already after service. You could drop it. Uh, we will still receive it, and God in heaven will receive it. And it is blessed already. Now we're going to sing our closing hymn. Standing on the promises of Christ. You might be in St. Edward Presbyterian Church, but where you are standing is the promises of Christ, is the holy ground of God. Sing with every power and strength. You've got left. Thank you. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the whole storm of doubts and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, 